Um, so, because uh, a lot of uh, aspiring film ac- uh, filmmakers listen to this podcast, um, since you guys are a duo, what is that process? kind of look like um in in, uh, like beat for beat are you guys sitting down and storyboarding is it do you have a particular process or is it just like we have this idea and we're gonna do what we need to do to get this made i mean yeah every every stage of the process is different um whether it's from the conception idea to writing it to getting on set, shot listing, to being in post-production, to doing your first edit, to looking at the next edit, to getting into the sound mix, to talking to the composer, like everything comes with lots of discussions. But um, probably the best way to describe those discussions is uh, is that if you want to be a filmmaker, no matter what, you're going to be constantly always collaborating with someone. You will never be by yourself. Um, we just happen to be very close friends who have worked like this for a long time but if we didn't have each other we'd have a producer a different producer doing this job every time that the other person that that we provide for each other um uh if that if that's helpful um well, yeah, I mean, I know, I, 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 I definitely am familiar with it. In fact, right now, this this stupid podcast got me a writing gig with a Malaysian director, and I've mentioned it on the show several times. Um, he asked me; he already had the story um, in mind and and all his characters, and he just wanted me to write the screenplay. And I said, okay, fine, but you got to understand is at least for in my particular um shoes i when he says all right well i want to tweak this and all right well i want to um add a character he's added two different characters we we were done three months ago and he's added two different characters and it's just driving me nuts but but i love him and and that's one of the things is that you got to be like you said down to collaborate and i i think there is this idea when it um, comes to being a filmmaker, especially like if you're a writer director, it's well, if it's not my vision, fuck it. Like I'm not going to bend or break on it. And that's just not the attitude to have, especially I think sometimes you can overlook just how good a different option or possibility could be. So I, I definitely understand. I just like it when um, some of the audience members, you know, they, I, I, there's one in particular that I'm thinking of right now. He just thinks, well, I, I'm a one man man or one man band. I'm a Robert Rodriguez. And it's like, no, dude, no, dude, you haven't even made a film yet. So how about if you collaborate and then maybe you can do this everything yourself but as of right now you just you got to lean on others sometimes i think that's super important in terms of making a film it, it would be hard to convince me that being a better filmmaker and being a better collaborator aren't the same thing like getting better being a filmmaking is getting better at collaborating that's what that is because filmmaking isn't a one man person almost ever you will always have a production designer you will always have a dp you'll have always people i mean that is to say as it gets bigger if you you can make a couple things completely by yourself maybe but that's <laughs> that it's not, it's not it's not really an art form built for being a one man anything um and and if you're not good at collaborating with all, if you're not getting better at collaborating with all these people in all these departments I don't know how you're getting better at being a filmmaker. I, I, think, a, I think also like the, the, the ones that when you think of it as like, oh, the, like a singular vision kind of a director, I think what they're also, what they're really particularly good at, it's not that they're bad at collaborating, it's they're really good at communicating uh, and they're really good at hiring people that, uh, that are all trying to make the same movie as them. And every, that's the goal, you know, that's the goal. But, uh, but it's not like you can just take a whole bunch of people that have no idea what the hell is going on and collaborate with them and not end up with kind of a mess. Um, it's just that those who are considered the, the people that are like, you know, have an extremely targeted point of view, they just know how to express it really well and they know how to get people around them that can execute it the right way. Well, and let's that, kind that can, And it works up similar ideas with that. Well, and let's kind of stick with that for a minute. So production design or people behind the scenes, um, if, let me let me blow a little bit more smoke and then we can we can chat about it a little more. I thought the production design in this, I thought the visual effects in this off the charts, fellas. And then once I found out that uh, for that one shot in uh, Anthony Mackey's apartment, 
Um, you didn't use green screen and rather you did rotoscope. Like my, my mind started to melt. And I, I guess in, uh, with working with people that have worked on Blade Runner 2049 and, and American Gods and, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, now, do you just let them run? Like, are you just like, hey, this is this is what we have on the page, you know, uh, talk, make it work? Or are you with them during that particular process? Uh, well, with, without a doubt, that's a massive collaboration where I think we went through about a... Um, of that, that particular effect that happens in the film, I think we, we went through, and I'm so sorry if I'm getting this number wrong, but it's 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 at least as absurdly, similarly absurd as how high the number is. But we went through like 130 uh, different takes of what that could be. Whoa. Um, uh, and, um, and it was a huge collaboration where we were, you know, I think the big thing we were sending over was some animated GIFs and some stuff from Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind and a few other little, little ideas, some body horror ideas. Um, our production designer, her name is Ariel Vida, uh, and she is the best production designer I think that we've ever worked with, especially in the indie space. But that that there, there's no way to reduce her to anything but the best production designer we've ever worked with. Yeah. So yeah, and, and, and she's like a good example of someone who is like, well, yeah, like <laughs> more so than other types of movies. There's probably more of a distinctive thing that we do in the for films we've done independently, Resolution, The Endless, Spring, and uh, Synchronic. But in cre- but working with, with Ariel and her team, it's like, often w- w- how that works is we tell them, we have a meeting, we talk about what we would like. They come out with, uh, at us with a lot of ideas based off the script. And, and then from that point on, it's a lot of, hey, that works, that doesn't work. But that's a collaboration, especially in the way we cannot take credit for the things yeah. they've made or yeah. designed. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, like, we, they, we we developed that script. We had a discussion, but they 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 came up with those things, and they brought them to us, and we said yes or no. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and I, I, I think that's what mo- – fundamentally, I think that's what most directors do. Mm-hmm. Even someone as singular as, like, you know, Quentin Tarantino is a singular director. You know it's in Tarantino when you see it. Um, and a lot of those ideas are his, but there is certainly people he collaborates with who bring him ideas, and they just yeah, that, they say yeah, exactly. They they look at the script, and you know the the thing they bring them five options of what the what feels like is in the tone of the script and in the movie, and how well they know the director. They bring them five different things and say which one of these works for you. Um, but all of those five things were provided by the production designer and thought of in that way, and, and you know. Curated, I guess is a way to say. And actually, you know what? Actually, even backing up, the job of a director and, or even just as a filmmaker is just a job of curation all the way through. It is, it is not, it is less so the act of creation and it's way more just curating, um, what you've, what you've thought of and tried to keep it as pure as you can along with everybody else who is also coming in and trying to curate it into that thing. It feels much more like a museum than an art piece. Um, and so sticking with that, um, Jimmy Laval knocks the score out of the park, out of the park. I just think it creates such a, another layer to this film. And I, and I'm looking at some of the stuff that he did and I'm just like, I thought that, oh, well, if you're a writer, you're, you know, you're kind of artsy. Some of the shit that composers do to come up with sounds or even sound designers themselves is nothing short of amazing. And um, I, I would assume, like, you, he probably turned something in. You went, yep, great. No, perfect. I, I got no changes. Or were there? Uh, there's, I mean, the, we, we, we've done three movies with, with Jimmy now. And uh, there's... There, what it always is is he sends us a bunch of initial tracks, things that sometimes it's just things that came to mind, and some, sometimes it's things he's seen picture and scored a picture and he sends them over. And always there are things that are very similar to the way they end up final and like extremely similar. Um, and then there's there's other times where it's like oh we'll get in the same room with him and throw a bunch of adjectives at him and be like darker, grindier, all these things. And and he gets there. Um, but it's weird to even say that because when you're working with him, you just feel like you're among this genius that you just don't, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. well, like it's weird. It's like, we've got almost nothing to do with what he does. It's yeah. mostly like, it's, yes, he, yes, he, there's, there's, it'd be lying to say if there wasn't a lot of direction. We'd also be lying to say that we have very much to do with it beyond.
beyond his genius. It's. I mean, uh, it, it was it was wild to I mean, watch him work, and then so I, I watched all the bonus features and everything, and then I went back and I watched the movie again, and I was just like, this dude is unreal how good he is and i just I, it, jimmy i just wanted you to know i love your work that's that's why we, you needed to be brought up just great work sir great fucking work um what else do i have i wanted to know and you and you you can answer very vanilla if you'd like i because i know sometimes you know people are hesitant to answer this question how do you feel about movies going straight to streaming in physical release as opposed to a theater release. Are you cool with it? Does it bother you? Because I'm going to be honest. I wish I would have saw this in the theater. Not going to lie. I think it would have. Well, let's just take the communal experience out of it, okay? Just being in that dark room with that particular sound system and, you know, seeing um, Anthony Mackie and uh, it's just I think it creates a different experience. And that's not to say that it made me like the movie any less. I just think that I would have enjoyed it even more so than I already did. Um, Unfortunately, you know, things are just weird right now. And I didn't know if you guys had a particular take on that. Um. Okay, so our, our thoughts are very broad on this, where um, I, I, have, I have absolutely no hesitations or, uh, or and nothing against uh, a movie going straight to streaming at all. Um, and, and the reason is, is um, uh, it, it actually is the one way that has kind of saved independent film. I mean, independent films, the bottom fell out of independent film a few years ago um, because, because of just like, Thinning margins and and uh, plenty of different reasons, um, and actually like weirdly like DVD sales slumped and then Blu-ray kind of picked it back up. It's, it's a big macroeconomic talk about it, and so really I say whatever gets more movies made, whatever gets movies made, because it's so damn hard to get a movie made. Um, and so if something going straight to streaming gets a movie made as opposed to a requirement for a theatrical, that's totally fine. That said. The other side of it is exactly what you're talking about. Going to movies is church. I will always go to movies. I love them. Uh, but once the moment this pandemic ends, I will live in a movie theater. Man, uh, and, I appreciate um, that. And so you know, and, and always as a filmmaker, you want to experience people to experience your movie in a cinema. Um, there, there's both things can be true, and that's okay. One of one of the last screenings we went to before the pandemic was uh, we went to a screening of Synchronic at a film festival in Glasgow, Scotland, called Fright Fest, and it was just the most amazing screening. It was like holy! It was so beautiful. It was a just packed audience, of just the, like the best audience with the best Q and A. It was so incredible, and it sounded amazing. It looked amazing, um, and it was really special that we like got to do that like right before you know we wouldn't be in a theater for a long time. Uh, and yeah, we miss it. <laughs> we miss it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I am with you. I think the last, yeah, the only thing I saw in the theater, or at least after the pandemic happened, was Tenet, and I saw I was by myself, and like at an afternoon showing, and I was just like, okay, this this movie's fine and everything, but this just doesn't feel right it just i i need to look over at somebody and go whoa right man that was crazy you know and you just can't you just can't do that right now and it's just i can't i'm with you i cannot wait to get back to it man because it's 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 church that's what i do like you know i i was before the whole pandemic you would catch me in the theater two to three times a week and that doesn't even count the shit that i'm watching at home so it's it's definitely being missed but I think, uh, you know, theater or not, uh, whoever uh, takes the time to listen to this podcast and or, or um, find Synchronic on their own, I, I think they're really going to be blown away at the uh, piece that you guys have delivered. I, I And I can't stress that enough. I just... I, I, I'd like to think I know good filmmakers when I see them, and you guys, you got the goods. You got the goods, gentlemen. Thank you. I mean, I'm just like I'm. I'm reflecting. I know we got to wind it down here, but I'm just like reflecting on some of like the you know jumping around in times. Whether it's the color grading of the whiteout, like it just it sells it. It's so good. I was like, holy shit, was that a woolly mammoth right there? What is happening right there? And then not to mention you had a real live gator, right? Like you had a live gator at some point in this. 
What's the next? That was JoJo. JoJo. That's right. That's right. Now, um...